Good evening, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And uh, I just have a few news stories I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, always something we could talk about living in the last days. There's a lot going on, but um, I'm just going to get right into it, try to keep the video fairly short. I've been keeping you guys kind of long lately. Um, so let's just get into several news stories. The first three uh, revolve around Pope Francis. There's an interesting uh, news story today out of uh, the Huffington Post religious section. Uh, and background on this, again, uh, a lot of controversy about Pope Francis and whether he's a legitimate pope or not. Um, and the conservative Catholics are certainly uh, up in arms about some of the things that the pope is saying and trying to do to the church. However... I just saw a, a, a poll that said 80% of U.S. Catholics love Pope Francis, thinks he, think he's think he's doing a great job. And Pope Francis is very, very popular all around the world. Uh, but within the church, there's certainly some division going on. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did an article about, uh, is Pope Francis the real Pope? Uh, there's just been a lot, a lot of discussion about that. So... Let's uh, let's get into this news story. It says Pope Francis's critics <clears throat> cite conclave conspiracy to question his papacy. This is a long article, and I highlight several areas of it. Uh, <clears throat> was there a secret plot to elect Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio at the papal conclave last year? Did Bergoglio, who became Pope Francis at that conclave, give the go-ahead to such a plan? And does that campaign call and does that campaign call his election and his papacy into question? Such questions might sound like a plot twist to a new Vatican thriller by Dan Brown, but they are actually the latest talking points promoted by some Catholic conservatives upset with the direction that Francis is leading the church. <coughs> <clears throat> the, furor, the furor stems from the behind-the-scenes account of the March 2013 conclave presented in a new book about Francis titled The Great Reformer, Francis and the Making of a Radical Pope. In the last chapter of the biography, which focuses on Bergoglio's early life in Argentina and career as a Jesuit, author Austin Everay deli uh, delivers an insider account of how a group of cardinals who wanted a reformer pope quietly sought to rally support for Bergoglio in the days leading up to the conclave. Cardinals take an oath not to divulge, divulge details of a conclave, and Everay based his account on background interviews with cardinals who took part. He called Francis's boosters Team Bergoglio. They were led by reform-minded by reform-minded European churchmen uh, like Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor of England. At one point, Everay writes that members of Team Bergoglio sought the Argentine cardinal's assent that he would not refuse the papacy if the voting turned his way. It says during the 2005 conclave, Bergoglio reportedly refused to take up the mantle when he was running second to Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger who would eventually be elected Pope Benedict XVI. This time, Everay writes, Bergoglio said that he believed that at this time of crisis for the church, no cardinal could refuse if asked. <clears throat> In conclaves, cardinals, of, cardinals often signal whether they would refuse or go along with election if it happened. It says, also, while overt politicking is strongly discouraged, the conclave rules expressly forbid deal-making. Cardinals often coalesce in camps behind one contender or another. Um, but when Everay's book was published last month, uh, media accounts of the politics of the conclave prompted some to question whether Bergoglio himself was involved by giving the go-ahead and whether that could undermine the, the legitimacy of his election. Uh, of course, cardinals are um, denying that this is, this happened, um, but uh, <coughs> it says church sources 
said the Vatican's quick reaction was an indication of how concerned Rome is that France's opponents will use any pretext to try to sow doubts about him and his papacy. Uh, it just again just another interesting news story about controversy surrounding Pope Francis and the Catholic Church and the division that uh, seems to be happening right now. Uh, and, and it, this article closes with this as other see accounts of conclave machinations as further evidence that Pope Francis is for them as as is for them a far more manipulative and autocratic figure than the public believes, and that would certainly go with his Jesuit background. And remember, he's the first Jesuit pope in the history of the, of the Vatican. Um, but it's interesting that they talk about show a little um, reprint. Or uh, of of part of the book, and it says, um, Irave says that the future reprints of the great reformer, the paragraph at the top of page three fifty five, will be amended as followed: the existing paragraph. They had learned their lessons from two thousand and five. They first secured Bergoglio's assent, asked if he was willing. He said he believed that at this time of crisis for the church, no cardinal could refuse if asked. The new one is going to say, in keeping with conclave rules, they did not ask Bergoglio if he'd be willing to be a candidate. But they believe this time that the crisis in the church would make it hard for him to refuse if elected. Interesting. Some cardinals are saying it was said one way, and then now the book is coming out and being revised. Uh, just again, keep your eye on it based on... Uh, I just, I'm not sure. They may, they may end up uh, declaring Pope Francis uh, anti-pope. And what will happen if that's the case? Will, will Pope Benedict come back? He's a living pope. There's two living popes right now, and Pope Benedict is the Pope Emeritus. Again, I can go back and rehash all of that, but read Revelation chapter 17. And uh, it talks about Mystery Babylon, which I believe is the Vatican. And uh, there's some interesting things in there about seven kings. And uh, I have a video you can go look at. It's Pope Benedict the Antichrist, Pope Francis the False Prophet. Um, let's move on. More Pope Francis news. Uh, <clears throat> will rock star Pope Francis become a movie star? This is out of technologytel.com, but I've seen it in several news sources. Will rock star Pope Francis become a movie star? By all accounts, Pope Francis is killing it in his role as a leader of the Catholic Church. He's held out olive branches to sections of society, homosexuals, atheists, non-Christians, that his religion has long since spurned. He's spoken out against fundamentalism. He uses the vast resources of the Vatican to do things like help the poor and battle inappropriate actions by his priests. Heck, he just recently reconciled his position with that of the patriarch Bartholomew I, uh, the leader of the world's Orthodox Church. There is only one real label that can be given his holiness. Rock star. And now he will be a movie star as well. Not Francis himself, mind you, but it looks like Argentina, his homeland, will be the first to make a biopic of this highly influential and incredibly popular pontiff. According to the Hollywood Reporter, um, uh, Dario Garandinetti will play the role of former uh, Buenos Aires Archbishop Jorge Borgoglio, and it talks about the rest of the cast, and and it will be uh, Pope Francis, life and revolution. Uh, again, just interesting because the world loves Pope Francis, um, and, and I want to do some scripture here in just a minute about that. But first, I want to do one more news story about Pope Francis, and this one here, just again, one of those stories that just kind of makes me sick. Um, the way the Vatican, the way the way Catholicism, well, again, they call him the they call the Pope the Vicar of Christ, which means they're in place of Christ on Earth. That is so not biblical, and it's sad how people look at this. So here, here's the headline: The Lord visits His people through His Vicar, Pope Francis. Let me read that headline again. If you're a Christian, that should really irritate you. The Lord visits his people through his vicar, Pope Francis. Wow. Okay, although the Lord has definitely come into the world through the incarnation of the eternal world, 
excuse me, of the eternal word. Throughout our journey as a pilgrim people, we will continue to wait for the Lord to come again and again into our lives and the world. The Lord visits us in various ways. For instance, through the sacraments. In the sacraments of reconciliation and the anointing of the sick, the Lord comes to us, comforting and healing us physically and spiritually. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, the Lord gives himself to us in the consecrated bread and wine, incorporating us into his mystical body. The Lord also visits us who wait in darkness and despair through people who listen to and comfort us, who help us carry our unbearable pain and strengthen us by their reassuring words and faithful friendship. In the granting of a work visa, the extension of a loan, the prayed-for remission from a terminal illness, the Lord visits us in innumerable ways. Next month, the Lord will come to us in a special way, through the visitation of his vicar on earth, Pope Francis. And by the way, this is an article of the Philippines. Apparently, Pope Francis is going to the Philippines. Um, in the midst of the inexplicable suffering, we, we rage against the heavens, crying out, Lord, why allow those um, you love to suffer immensely? Where are you amidst our pain and anguish? Pope Francis has made explicit that he is visiting the Philippines primarily because of his desire to express solidarity with the su survivors of Typhoon Yolanda and an earthquake. Through the Holy Father, the Good Shepherd is reaching out to those who think they have been forsaken and forgotten. It says, through the Holy Father, who has canceled his luncheon with the bishops, the princes of the church, and who has scolded the local officials of Tacloban for planning to relocate evacuees in order to beautify the ravaged city, the Lord makes his compassion and mercy palpable and undeniably real. And then it gets really bad. It says, however, the assurance of God's visitation also entails preparation. Both internal and external, both individual and communal. As, the, as John the Evangelist declares in our gospel today, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Are we preparing for post Pope Francis' visit by finding ways to come as close to him as possible for future bragging rights, buying, by buying souvenirs and memorabilia? In the end, commoditizing, commoditizing our Holy Father and trivializing his visit. Moreover, the significance of his visit cannot end with spiritual euphoria, electrifying indeed, yet uh, this is the spiritual graces his visit will bestow <sighs> will prove useless unless accompanied by a genuine conversion of heart on the individual and societal levels. Uh, and again, they go back to the make straight his paths. Um, He's not God. They're treating him, again, of course, like he is God. And that you need him for a relationship or encounter or, or of God. And you know what's funny? The Holy Spirit is not mentioned one time in this article. Uh, the, the word the Lord is a couple times. But... Um, Really nothing, I don't see the name Jesus once, and the Holy Spirit's not named one time. You do not need Pope Francis for anything, honestly. Um, and it says here, uh, the, Pope, the Lord visits us through sacraments and through uh, the Eucharist. And Guys, the, the Lord will live in you if you're born again. The Bible makes it clear there was a once and only, one time perfect sacrifice. It's all that ever had to happen. The one sacrifice that was sufficient, and Jesus is now in heaven at the right hand of the Father. It's Hebrews chapter 10. Um, verse 10. Hebrews 10.10 10, by, by thee which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. 
For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us, through the, through the veil that is to say his, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. <clears throat> uh, guys, you don't need Pope Francis. You don't need the Eucharist. You don't need the sacrifice of the Mass. They can continually re-crucify Christ by supposedly changing his body and blood and the wine at the sacrifice of the Mass daily. And it says right here, every priest stand a daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. The vicar of Christ is not the replacement of Jesus Christ on earth. The Holy Spirit is. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's look at some scripture real quick. John chapter 15. Oh. John 15, uh, verses 18 to 27. Uh, there we go. If the And by the way, we just did an article about how Pope Francis is, is a rock star, now a movie star. The world loves him. Keep that in mind because I'm going to go into some scripture now. Verse uh, John 15, 18 to 27. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated, hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they do not know him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which uh, none other man did, they had not had sin, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Verse 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he, will, he shall testify of me. And ye also bear, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. The, Jesus went to, and ascended back to heaven to the right hand of the Father and sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to be with us. He didn't send us a Pope. Let's go to uh, John chapter 16, verse 7 through 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. If I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Again, the Holy Spirit was sent to us, to indwell us, to empower us, to lead us into all truth and allow us to be transformed into a new creation in Christ. Um, 
so that we can walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. Um, wow. Well, I wish. Now, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Um, John 3, 3. Verily, uh, ver verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, verse 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The Holy Spirit indwells the believer. The, you can come straight to the throne of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. In fact, not that, not that you can, it's the only way you can. Period. And there is no such thing as a representative of Jesus on this earth except for the Holy Spirit. Um, and that just, man, that irritates me. Okay, so let's, let's go to 2 Timothy real quick. Um, you know, when I was a Catholic, I never felt any, I didn't feel close to God. I didn't know I was saved because I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I had empty religious ritual. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes into into your heart and in your life and empowers you, and and you're born again, and and all of a sudden you have that assurance of salvation, and totally different outlook on life and desires. Second um, Timothy chapter four verses three and four because this just backs up again, the fact that um you know the world loves Pope Francis and even even atheists and, and non-Catholics love Pope Francis. That should be a strong tip off to you that something's not quite right. With Pope Francis. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away from their ears from the truth, and it shall be turned unto fables. Lately, recent fables by Pope Francis. Dogs go to heaven when they die. Uh, even atheists can be saved if they do good works. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 there's a million of them. I, I don't know why I can't think of them all right now. My mind's going a million miles an hour. But the fact of the matter is, the, the world loves the Pope because the Pope doesn't preach sound doctrine. And we're at the time right now where the world will not endure sound doctrine, and they love the Pope. Jesus said, if the world hates you, it hated me first, but I don't see a lot of the world hating Pope Francis. Um, the, the, again, the world loves Pope Francis and his false doctrine. Uh, speaking of, uh, and I'm going to put this into, um, let me find it, hold on a minute. I want to put this into uh, the description box too. Vicarious Philae Day, 666, the number of the beast. Um, and it shows you how Vicar of Christ adds up that phrase to 666. So I'll put that into the uh, description box for you as well. Um, Pope France is looking more and more and more like the second beast, Revelation, the false prophet. Let me just go there real quick and read one verse. Uh, Revelation 13, 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had... Two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And that is the false prophet of the book of Revelation. All right. Um, let's look at a, just a couple more news stories real quick. Um, one, darn it, one I forgot to Google one. All right, here we go. This is all the Times of Israel today. Poll. Uh, one state solution to conflict finds rising support in the United States. Again, they were trying to find any possible way to come up with the peace agreement, which will turn out to be the covenant with many of Daniel 9.27, starting the final seven-year period of time. But this is a poll. Uh, the Times of Israel says 71% of respondents encourage a binational state 
if two states not possible. Uh, more Americans tacitly back Palestinian statehood bid at UN. Um, a growing number of Americans back the idea of a one-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and over two-thirds of those surveyed in a recent poll published Friday by the Brookings Institute said they would call for a single democratic state should a two-state solution provide prove unviable. According to the findings of the survey, the percentage of those polled who want Washington, Washington to advocate the single binational state with equal citizenship of Jews and Arabs has risen from 24% to 34%. Uh, the poll was conducted online by Shibli something uh, from the Anwar, Sadat, uh, the Anwar Sadat Professor for Peace and Development at the University of Maryland. Uh, of the 1,008 Americans respondents, 71% said that if a two-state solution fails, they favor a binational democratic state over a Jewish state which deprives Palestinians of citizenship. Only 24% of the respondents said they favor the Jewishness of Israel, the Jewishness of Israel more than its democracy. Uh, Says at the same time, despite their opposition, most Americans polled said they do not advocate any form of sanctions against Israel for continued settlement activity. I reported that on yesterday that Barack Obama is considering sanctions on Israel for building in Jerusalem uh, while upping our amount of um, support from to a billion dollars to Jordan, who just condemned Israel for uh, Temple Mount stuff. So unbelievable. Um, but as you can see, again, it's just amazing how this two-state solution, one-state solution, whatever you want, they're going to end up doing, is on the minds of every nation. It's every day, all around the world. It's going to get done one way or another. Uh, but again, it's not going to bring on peace. And, um, you know, the uh, Palestinians, Hamas, Iran... They make it clear every single day they don't want peace. So let's look at a, another article that will prove that point. Uh, this is how the Eretz Sheva Hamas annihilate brothers of apes and pigs. Oh, why didn't that open? All right, this is how the Eretz Sheva. Former Hamas interior minister promises to annihilate and destroy the Jews who build settlements around Al-Aqsa. An official in Hamas recently vowed to annihilate the brothers of apes and pigs, that is, the Jews. He says, We say to the brothers of the apes and pigs, no matter how much you destroy, dig, and try to build settlements around the Al-Aqsa Mosque, we are coming to uproot you, to annihilate you, and to destroy you, he threatened. The hypocrites will find themselves in the lowest level of hellfire, Whoever shackles his people and their resistance, whoever shackles the AK-47s will be trampled under the feet of our people in this world and will find himself in the lowest level of hellfire in the world to come. Hamad has in the past called on Fatah to join Hamas and wage jihad against Israel. He previously declared that Israel would be gone in eight years. Other Muslim leaders who have in the past compared Jews to apes and pigs include Palestinian uh, Authority Mufti Sheikh Mohammed Hussein and former Egyptian President Mohammed Morsi. Um, interestingly, uh, President Erdogan of Turkey has been making a lot of anti-Semitic statements lately as well, which is interesting because, again, Turkey at this moment is a NATO member. Um... But they're starting to form some alliances with Russia. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, Turkey and Russia will come together against Israel. That that uh, start that that partnership, so to speak, is starting to come together. That alliance, I should say. All right. Um, let's look at one more. Actually, two more news stories. Uh, Palestine, Palestine Israeli conflict agreement on shared space should be honored. Uh, we're, we're, this is a couple articles I'm going to read back to back here that are very they're, they're related. Um, all 
know, where's the article at? Here it is. <clears throat> this is also this is actually out of a place an, an article called the Island Packet. Hilton had kind of odd. Um, in Palestinian Israeli conflict, agreement on shared sacred space should be honored. It says Jews pray at the Western Wall in the Holy City of Jerusalem, and Muslims pray above the wall on the Mount or Plaza where the Dome of the Rock and the Al Aqsa Mosque reside. Standing at that sacred place, one can't help but feel the two theological tectonic plates threaten to collide. It is a scary thought given what we have witnessed in recent weeks of Palestinian terrorist attacks, Israeli house demolitions against the Palestinian families of the terrorists, and targeted car attacks against innocent Israeli bystanders. Um, Palestinians say, say Jews want to take over their worship space on the Temple Mount and reinstitute Jewish worship, worship as it was in the days of the Holy Temple. This creates a worldwide response among Muslims, igniting religious passions against Jews and Israel. Uh, then it goes into a big history of the Temple Mount. I won't go through all that. Um, but it says, Today, while non-Muslims are allowed to tour the grounds and the, and the Dome of the Rock, uh, non-Muslims are not permitted to pray on the Mount. Uh, some Israeli politicians, politicians and fundamentalist rabbis believe Jews should be able to pray on the site of the Temple Mount. This is where the violation of, of convergent boundaries occurs, thereby escalating the fear that if it wasn't a calming of the tensions, then a real religious war could break out, and recently uh, Jordan uh, and Hamas leadership have been saying that there's going to be serious war breakout over the Temple Mount. They even called for a bloodbath. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has reiterated his commitment to maintain the government's decade-old policy to preserve the Temple Mount for only Muslim prayer, uh, it says, it is about time to squash isolated efforts to disturb this fragile arrangement on the Temple Mount and Western Wall. There are many larger and pressing issues in a stalled peace process to tackle than precipitating a religious war over access to sacred worship sites. But it says, leaders on all sides need to reduce the friction and preserve the right to peacefully worship for Jews, Muslims, and Christians in Jerusalem. Now that's interesting because of the last news story I want to cover real quick. We saw the Times of Israel. Again, there are new elections coming on. Uh, there's going to be new leadership, it looks like, in Israel. While all this is going on on the Temple Mount, the two-state solution, what's going to happen when there's new leadership in there? Uh, very interesting. It's, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens. So this is out of the Times of Israel today. Herzog, I will be Israel's next prime minister. Uh, he, he promises to lead Israel in a better direction. Uh, like, uh, Labor, excuse me, Labor Party uh, leader Isaac Herzog declared that he would become Israel's next prime minister after the March 2015 elections uh, by a leading centrist bloc that would defeat Benjamin Netanyahu. He said, the Israeli public trusts me, calling this one of my virtues, and beating Netanyahu is feasible, he insisted. Um, Netanyahu is expected to partner with Jewish home leader Naftali Bennett, the economy minister, and the ultra-Orthodox parties in trying to forge his government uh, after the elections. Let me scroll down here. Um, this is, again, a long article. Okay, here's, here it says, Turning to the issue of the stalled peace process, Herzog said that he had no illusions but was not willing to give up efforts to achieve a two-state solution with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. <coughs> um, the number one hindrance to peace is the lack of trust and discourse between the leaders, Herzog said, indicating that he had a good uh, rapport with the PA president. My settlement, this is where it's interesting, he said, my settlement policy is based on the famous Clinton parameters, Herzog said, in reference to the guidelines presented by the former U.S. president, which call for a Palestinian state 
in 95% of the West Bank, the Israeli annexation of the settlement blocks, and a divided Jerusalem as the capital for both Israel and a future Palestine. He said the situation is so devastating because of the feeling of lack of hope and the feeling of despair. Most worrisome is the unleashing of feelings of religious hatred that is so dangerous to all of us, he said, in reference to the tension surrounding the Temple Mount. Um, so what's, what's interesting here, though, is he said he, his, he wants to go back to the Clinton parameters, which would be a shared and divided Jerusalem as the capital. There's going to be a shared Temple Mount eventually. The Dome of the Rock will probably still be there, or at least the al Aqsa Mosque will be. Maybe they both will be, and the Temple Mount will. Well, the Temple will be built up there as well. They will share that area somehow, some way, within a two-state solution. But I just got done doing a previous article talking about how they needed to share um, the religious space. That they had to, that they need to start working together so the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians can all pray at the holy sites. And now Herzog, who says he's going to be the next prime minister, um, says that his his policy is based on the famous Clinton parameters with the divided Jerusalem as a capital for both Israel and a future Palestine. There are <laughs> so many people working on this potential covenant with many and so many aspects to it and it will not go away and again the reason it will not go away is because we're at the time for it to happen and if you believe like I do that the rapture of the church has to happen before the Antichrist is revealed 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 6 through 8 the restrainer um that the church has to leave before the Antichrist can can be revealed, before that wicked would be revealed, then how close could the rapture be? It is time to make sure you are ready. All of the signs that Jesus told us to look for are here. Wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, famines. Obviously the, the unrest in the Middle East and everybody concerned with Jerusalem is a cup of trembling and a burdensome stone. And the world is turning their back on Israel, trying to force them to give up their land, divide Jerusalem. Time is short. All the signs are here. Make sure you're saved. If not, call upon the name of the Lord. He still saves. He's the only source of salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You don't need the Pope. You don't need anybody else on this earth. You need to go directly to Jesus Christ for your salvation. In faith and repentance, he will save you. Do it soon, you're running out of time. God bless everyone.